Yo, what's up, YouTube? Mooks back again with another video. Fuck. Somebody count the days, like, I'm uploading every day, I swear, like, on everything. I'm uploading every single day, like, for real. But, we watch another How to Beat videos, bro. And these videos are just, like, too, like, good, bro. So, pause the video. Like, go get some snacks or something. Hold on, bro. I got some, I got some chips for y'all. Yeah. If y'all want those, some Taki. If y'all get thirsty, I got some juice for y'all. Open your mouth. Open, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. I got you, bro. I got you. Like, you know I got you. You know I got you. Come on. You know I got you. And, and hey, hey, hey. And if y'all wanted a little sweet with it, you know I got you some sour patches. Like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. You know, you know Mook's gonna get you right every time. But we watch it. How to beat, how to beat every trap in Jigsaw. Bro, this dude, bro, his name used to be Cinema Summary, bro. His videos are just too fire. Like, I love watching these. But let's get into it, man. I talked for way too long. There is no nightmare fuel worse than being in one of Jigsaw's traps. If he picked you for one of his games, what would you do? This is how to beat Jigsaw. We start off following a man running from the cops and into an empty warehouse. Up on the rooftop, he finds a detonator duct taped to a beam. Desperate and cornered, he demands to see a detective hollering, and if he doesn't come in the next 17 minutes, five people are going to die. The detective arrives at the scene with his partner, and obviously they think he means it's five hostages strapped to a bomb, but time is running out. He pulls on the switch, and the cops start firing. But something is wrong with this whole situation. Holding a long-range wireless detonator, which typically has a range of 1,000 meters and must have line of sight, which means whatever it's going to trigger is nearby. But there's nothing around them except empty factories, so there's no one here to kill. This is highly suspicious. The detective looks for clues, now realizing he will soon be caught in one of Jigsaw's gruesome traps. With his dying words, he tells the detectives the games have begun, and somewhere in a dark room, a countdown has reached zero, and four people wake up and they realize the only way out is through a door of saw blades until they hear the voice of a man and he's speaking directly to them. Wait. So for these like jigsaw movies or saw movies, if you beat the trap, do you get to like leave? Or do you gotta do like more? They must now play a game. All that's required is a blood sacrifice. And with that ominous warning, their chains start pulling them towards the spinning blades. If I were in this room, I'd be absolutely terrified but they're all wasting time by resisting because this trap is possible to escape with some quick thinking and strategy. Now, he didn't say it needed to be your blood, so you might think to push someone into your door's blades, which is super cold-blooded, even for me. But the room is being monitored, and there's no way to evade any potential consequences, so cheating isn't a great option here. One woman has an epiphany. She walks towards the spinning blades, green light flickers on her helmet, and the blades in her door stop in place. She figured it out quickly. But first, I would definitely be trying to cut the chains with the saw. Only if that fails is it time to think about where to cut yourself. Your limbs have vital arteries and are important for mobility. The others follow their lead and cut themselves as they're dragged to the next room. Oh, but the last man more. is in for a rude awakening as he's more. too late to open the door. In the autopsy, two medics find a jigsaw-shaped cut in the man's skin, the calling card of the legendary jigsaw killer, John Kramer, who's been dead for 10 years. The lead doctor pulls out a chip from the man's wound, revealing that there are four more people left in his trap. The survivors who made it past the first stage try to figure out what is going on and why they've been chosen, and they realize they've been chosen for past sins. But it's time to focus on what matters. This is a game, and games can be won. You have a critical moment here to plan ahead for what's to Talk to me. Y'all talk to me. What y'all doing in this situation? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. What y'all doing in this situation? Come. If you're not checking the environment for tools that could help you, then you're wasting your time. This place is loaded with useful tools. The teeth of the pitchfork could be put through the chains to stop it. You could also use the hoof nipper to break the camera. Suddenly, the winches start pulling them forward. The first instinct is to quickly wrap a chain around a sturdy object, but it likely won't yeah, be I enough. Jug, your best bro. chance is to cross your own chain around the winch yeah. and into a knot, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. as it like... tightens, it pulls on itself and jams, and the knot wouldn't be able to move through the wheels. One guy spots a tape recorder and grabs it, causing the winches to break off, except this is a setup for the next trap, to be hung from the ceiling. Three syringes drop down, all marked with numbers. The tape recorder has a message saying, a purse snatcher has been poisoned, and only one syringe has the antidote. The others have saline or a deadly acid. 
their only clue is a question. What is the value of a life to you? Luckily, the blonde's guilty expression is all the proof they need to know that she's a thief. The problem, she isn't willing to take the shot. Now with that being said, there might be a way to outsmart this. An acid will burn, put someone's skin or supply blood to test the compounds. If you experience itching, rashes, or skin necrosis, you may be able to eliminate it, allowing you to confirm by the taste of salt that one of the remaining two really is saline solution, revealing the last syringe as the antidote. But relying on others' cooperation is risky because hesitation or dishonesty will get us killed. In this case, the puzzle could be solved without their confession. The tape gave enough information here, a purse snatcher who doesn't value life. If the lesson he wants to shame you with is that life is worth very little to you, then the lowest number of 3.53 could be guessed correctly as a monetary value, saving everyone from a bad case of the Mondays. Instead, the bearded man stabs all three syringes into the blondie, and they're finally set free. They all watch in horror as the acid eats her face to a leaky pulp. Damn. The guy in plaid checks the antidote syringe, finding a sequence of numbers inside, and uses them to successfully unlock the next door. Which is great, but what about the windows? I would stack the bales of hay to get up and see if I can break free. But sure, let's just walk into the next trap. They might be safe for now, but another brutal trap awaits them through this door. I would Damn, take precautions. We, we should to. survey the room before leaving and grab what we can, because it might prove useful and you simply don't know what's next. The last door is mechanized, so jamming the door with this wheelbarrow could keep it open long enough for them to retreat when things go horribly wrong. They don't stop to consider any of this as the door slams behind them, forcing them inwards to face their next twisted confessional. But I'm such a coward, you're gonna have to drag me out of the first room. The cops find more evidence that Jigsaw is somehow still alive, confirming the voice print of the message was definitely Jigsaw's. They don't know what to make of this because all signs point towards an impossible Jigsaw resurrection, but if they dug deeper, they could have solved this case right here. Any audio recording since 2005 can be accurately dated using just the background hum. The electrical frequency from our power grids have a unique fluctuation, and matching that frequency to a database, they would have been able to confirm which power grid it was recorded in and the date of its recording. The three survivors enter another room like and find that not only are the windows barred, but they are in the countryside. These traps are personal, so it's time for honesty. The bearded man admits he's cheated on his wives, along with a slew of other crimes. The woman tells them her husband accidentally smothered her baby and she's never forgiven him. Hardly a confession. We also know this woman was a thief, whose greed ended up killing someone. We'll find out that every single one of these people are here because they did some bad shit and Jigsaw tracked them down for payback, but you still have a chance. Now this room is suspiciously void of traps, but you can guarantee there's one somewhere. But it's not time to break out yet. Find the trap first without setting it off. By cautiously investigating the area, they'd find a great vantage point for the sides here, exposing the trap beneath the floorboards. Then, it's time to find the camera and break it, giving you enough time to avoid the trap and break down the door with the tools inside. But this guy doesn't care much for planning as he falls through the floorboard and right into the trap. Breaking through the floor with a shovel, they find a tape recorder. He finally grabs it and they play it back. Pull the lever and everyone goes free. I would try to get him out by attaching these chains and hooks on the pulley wheels. Pulling to reverse the trap and give enough slack to pull his leg out. But this wouldn't work because I'm not on steroids. My very average strength probably won't match the pulley's force. A better method is to find something heavy enough to use as a counterweight to help relieve the tension of the wire. There are tons of heavy objects Bro, like, in this room and if you can figure out the leverage needed, pause, it might be enough. Pause, pause, Suddenly, pause, all the pause, lights pause. go out, except for the one in the silent. Together, they walk inside and find a TV remote hanging on a string. With no other options, they grab it, immediately like, locking them in. in. Movies, like, the TV escape, turns on, like, announcing that this escape. guy must pull the or lever to save their lives, inside. but might lose his leg as a result. And in that moment, the silo begins to fill with grain. Okay, let's take another look. This is obviously a trap, so maybe take the doors off the hinges before entering in case you need to bail. But they've made this harder on themselves. Grain entrapment is no joke and takes only 22 seconds to be completely submerged. Desperate as it might seem, I would wrap my shoelaces around my hands and weave them through holes in the iron mesh to stay on top of the grain. Also, dispersing weight across the grain makes it harder to get sucked in. It's not a permanent solution, but it buys time for this guy to sack up and pull the lever. Trapped in the grain and unable to move, a pitchfork flies down, inches away from them. This just got a lot more interesting. Saw blades and knives begin raining down, one of them flung right into his shoulder and they really don't have much to work with here. But every weapon that misses them is an object they can use to protect themselves. The screams of pain overwhelm him with guilt and he pulls the lever. His leg gets sliced, the silo doors burst, and the exit swings open, leading to the next room. This was one leg short of a miracle. Meanwhile in the lab, they discover particles of pig feces and blood under the nails of the victim that matches the DNA of Jigsaw himself. 
He must be alive. And all this could help them find the others, but they're interrupted with a new arrival. It looks like the purse thief. Her autopsy shows that she has a jigsaw-shaped cut in her tongue, and the assistant gets way too excited about this. Damn, the assistant kinda... Ooh, the assistant kinda... Uh. I'm saying. And there's a lot more where that came from, as she shows the doctor her hobby room full of jigsaw traps. It's incredibly suspicious, but also kind of kinky. Fashioning a tourniquet with her belt, the woman bandages the guy's leg, while the other survivor struggles to force open a door. Suddenly, the tractor's lights turn on, and inside is a tape recorder meant for him. And he. She's immune. Out west. They're working on a cure. To get her there. And we said everything. And he fell for the bait. Okay, hay scattered across the floor is not an accident. Unfortunately, you have to play the game, but you don't have to walk into its trap if you can help it. Environmental awareness saves lives. So maybe next time before you get caught, investigate the giant trap in the middle of the floor first. The recorder continues, as we find out that years ago, he sold a faulty motorbike to Jigsaw's nephew, who died minutes after buying it. If he doesn't pull the handbrake at the bottom to stop the swirling blades, he'll be turned into human sashimi. Now once you're lowered in, you don't have a chance. So lucky for him, the gears of this trap are exposed. This can be jammed by putting a strong metal object between the gears or the wheel spokes. The woman tries this and it works, but not long after, the force pulls through the obstruction. Okay, this thing is freaking strong, but there was something they could have done even before all of this. She could have helped him swing as soon as he was off the ground, increasing his angular momentum, which would give him several chances to reach the bike and pull himself onto it. I mean, look how close he is already. It wouldn't take much, but that's only half the battle. There's no kill switch and the only break is through the trap. If the engine's already running, disconnecting the battery won't cut it off. Now I'm not a motorcycle mechanic, so this one is tricky, but maybe this key in the ignition will help. It's worth a shot, but time runs out for him, resulting in another brutal death. The woman is able to force open a doorway and make it to the other side, but she sees a man in a pig mask and gets knocked out. The next day, the suspect has gone missing from the hospital, and when John Kramer's casket is opened up, the suspect's body is inside, and Jigsaw is nowhere to be found. The woman wakes up to find both her and the other survivor have been shackled to the wall by John Kramer, the Jigsaw killer himself who's very much alive, and tells them they've been thinking about all of this backwards. Jigsaw reveals that she lied about her husband smothering the baby. She was the one who killed it and framed her husband for murder. So now he's made this really simple, loaded with one shell. He leaves them one shotgun, placed between them both. The woman realizes someone will have to die, and she won't let it be her. Now they're forgetting two key details here. First, there's always a way out for everyone, and second, he wants to make a moral point. Now this might be with the benefit of hindsight, but when he holds up the shell and says, here's the key to freedom, maybe it has a little more meaning, and maybe trying to kill someone is playing right into his hands. They would have seen this in every room, with each tape talking about how they put their lives before others. But how do we beat this? Investigating the room and devices before any rash action is always the right play, but they don't. He begs her not to kill him, but she grabs the gun, lines up the barrel, and pulls the trigger as the gun backfires. He then has a horrifying realization as he sees fragments of keys, color-coded green for the woman's lock and yellow for his. The keys were in the shell. They could have escaped if she hadn't fired the gun. This is what he meant when he said they've got all this backwards. But wait, let's back up because there may have been another way. This is actually the most forgiving trap so far, because there's no time limit here, and the trap is only a padlock. But let's say there were no keys. I'm immediately grabbing the gun to prevent the other guy from shooting. This railing is attached by four screws on each end. With no time limit, it might be possible to kick it loose to slip the chains out. However, this isn't a great strategy if you only have one leg. I would try to disassemble the gun using the pieces to pry open the padlock, which is possible to do with a pair of wrenches. It would likely be extremely difficult in this case, but all it needs is leverage and sturdy tools. It also might be your only chance to live. The detective learns about the assistant's warehouse, and they bust into her extremely suspicious museum of terror. And behind a fake wall, they find another shredded victim hanging from the ceiling. The doctor gets arrested because he was seen with the assistant at the warehouse the night before but claims that inside the suspect's body is a bullet that could have only been fired by Halloran's gun. This means the detective shot him to hide his true identity as the Jigsaw killer, and he shows the detective the evidence. Back home, the assistant tells him she knows where Jigsaw is playing his game and decides to check it out. They arrive at the farm where they find the traps, but Halloran has followed them. He tries to take them hostage, and they're able to break away and split up, and Halloran gets knocked out. He and the doctor wake up with a collar of laser cutters on their necks. 
This is Jigsaw's final game. Confess their sins as to why they deserve to die, and they'll be set free. Okay, hold up. I'm not waiting around for a confession here. I can't see my trap, but I can see the other person's and assume mine is identical. To produce enough energy to power these lasers, there must be wiring inside the mechanized arm. It won't hold your weight extended like this. First thing I'm trying to do is grab the collar and use my weight to pull it down, hoping to break the arm and maybe sever the power supply. Hollerin activates the doctor's collar and forces him to confess his crime. He was the one that messed up Jigsaw's cancer x-rays, dooming him. But it's not the confession that Jigsaw wants, and the doctor has his neck lasered open, killing him instantly. The detective is next, and his lasers turn on. He confesses a whole laundry list of crimes, but there's something wrong here. The lasers on his collar burned the ceiling above him, while the ones on the doctor's didn't. What is going on? The doctor gets up from the floor and confesses that he is Jigsaw. Everything was staged, and the trap was fake. Years ago, he was chosen for a game, because he really did screw up Jigsaw's x-ray, which led to the cancer being detected too late to treat him. But Jigsaw had mercy at the last minute, and saved him because it was just an accident, letting him become Jigsaw's apprentice. He was the guy in the beginning of the movie who we thought had died in the buzzsaw room. Now, 10 years later, he set things up to trick them that Jigsaw was back, planted fake evidence to frame the detective, he shot the first suspect on the rooftop with a sniper, and faked the tapes with Jigsaw's voice. And no one will know the truth. All because the detective let this guy, the criminal who killed the doctor's wife, go free. The doctor leaves Holler into his death as the laser cutter splits his head into pieces. Game over. Now this is just the start. There are more convoluted, horrifying jigsaw traps out there, and we're going to get them all in upcoming videos. But what do you think? Chat. How would you beat the hey, death traps of Jigsaw? Let jigsaw me know in the comment this? down below. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. And until next mm, I don't know though. But you know, try like this, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out. <laughs>